Hey guys, welcome back to Once Upon a Tiny Farm. My name's Drew, in today's video, I wanna talk about 10 essential tools that I think are necessary for running the most efficient backyard garden possible and will make your life a whole lot easier in the garden. So stick around. All right, so as I first started gardening, I didn't have all of these 10 things that I'm about to mention. I had some of them lying around and I used what I had, but I don't want the point of this video to be to discourage people from gardening uh, if they don't have all the right tools because that's obviously not true. You could garden with whatever you have and it shouldn't be very expensive. But the point of this video is just I'm talking about 10 things I think that you should definitely have. Some things that I wish I had when I first started gardening and I would have uh, not made a lot of mistakes in the garden. So that's what this video is coming from from that point of view. So first I want to talk about um, very important part of the garden and that is the wheelbarrow. Um, this is the second one that I had. I really like this one. Um, my wife got this for me for my birthday uh, from Tractor Supply. Let's see, uh, six cubic feet is how much uh, material it'll fit in there. And I really like this one. It's very um, balanced. No matter how much uh, weight you have in here, uh, just the way that this thing is designed. Um, it's very comfortable. It's very easy to push. I like these um, feet they have down here. Make it really easy uh, and level when you put it down. Um, this brand is called Groundwork. I think this is just like a typical tractor supply brand. Um, before we had this one, uh, we got like a very cheap plastic uh, wheelbarrow. And uh, we thought we were saving money by getting uh, a, you know, a cheaper one, but it ended up breaking, as you would imagine. And we ended up having to spend some money on a good wheelbarrow anyway. But uh, I think this one cost over $100 or close to $100. Uh, I bet you could find one for a lot cheaper used on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, something like that. But a very important thing to have if you're planning on having a large garden and you're gonna have to wheelbarrow and move a lot of soil, compost, things like that. Uh, important to have a nice deep uh, wheelbarrow, one that feels comfortable moving around. So I'm glad we got this and uh, highly recommend a good wheelbarrow made of metal of some kind. All right, the next tool I want to uh, talk about is this. This is a propane torch. Uh, there's lots of different propane torches you could get and find uh, online and in stores. Um, I got this one. Uh, it's got a pretty wide uh, bell on the end of it. Um, a lot of the ones I looked at were uh, a little bit more narrow of a bell size than this. I liked this, what seemed like a good price, and uh, I got it. And having this propane torch has been a game changer in being proactive and preventing weeds in the garden. And I've used this a lot uh, the second half uh, of the season as my weed pressure really heated up in July and August really bad. And on my last few uh, bed flips, when I used the uh, propane torch before I seeded a new crop, I had great success in preventing lots of weeds. So as a preventative, I really like this uh, propane torch. Um, it doesn't disturb the soil at all. Um, soil is a really good insulator, so you might think that burning a hot fire on top of the soil is really going to kill all the good uh, biology deep in the soil and it's not. It's just going to kill what's right on top of the soil and most of that's going to be that dead plant debris anyway that you want to get rid of. So this will help you do that, speed up that process and I really like that. So I've been using this. I'm excited to use this again this year but to make my life a little bit easier I actually invested, found a... I had been using a 20 pound propane tank that's very heavy and uh, kind of a pain to lug around the farm. So I got this, is, um, I thought it was a 10 pound uh, tank. This says, it's a, this says it's 11 pounds, I think. But yeah, this is an 11 pound uh, propane tank and it's skinny enough to fit inside this hiking backpack that I have. So now, I didn't get this filled up yet for the season, but I'll be able to uh, connect my my propane torch to this small tank and walk around with this on my back very comfortably uh, on my back and uh, I'll be able to weed a lot easier uh, next year with, with my backpack. So 
I'm excited about using that. And uh, yeah, if you have a lot of ground to cover, I might consider uh, looking into a, um, a backpack and a smaller tank so it's easier to move around and uh, flame weed your garden as well. All right, the next tool I want to mention that's really helpful, it's been really helpful to me in, in the garden, and uh, this is called a Hori Hori knife. And oh, it's getting a little rusty because I don't take very good care of my tools, and that's something my wife always yells at me about. But um, it came with a nice little sheath. Um, there, there's lots of different brands that make knives like this. But what I like about it is it's got... Um, a little ruler on there to uh, six inches so you can measure um, you know how it, it's helpful to me when I'm transplanting things so I, I, I usually try to keep this on me and if I want to do things six inches apart which is what I do with my lettuce I can use this as a measurement and I'll put four heads of lettuce six inches apart in a 30 inch wide bed so this is very helpful just to have the uh, the, the ruler there the other cool thing about it is it's kind of uh, spoon shaped in a way you might not be able to tell but this is really good for digging so I use this a lot when I'm transplanting to in order to keep one of my hands clean uh, I can just use this to scoop out a little um, divot and put in my transplant and then move on to the next um, so I like to use that for that it's also got a serrated side that's uh, pretty sharp um, it's good for cutting out some like uh, thicker stem things like uh, something like a broccoli that has a stick st thick stem and it's done and you want to cut it out you could use this to to uh, to cut that out it's also got a sharp side on the other side so I've actually experimented trying to cut some of my um, head lettuce with this and it works pretty well it's not my favorite knife to cut lettuce with but um, I like the versatility in this knife and I, I really use it a lot for transplanting because of the, the ruler that it has on it. And uh, I use it for cutting some things out of the ground. It's very handy to have. Highly suggest the Hori Hori knife. Not very expensive. Might be like $15, something like that. Oh, and by the way, all these things that I'm mentioning, I have an Amazon affiliates account. And all of the things that I'm mentioning are going to be down in the details below this video. So, oh, that was my chickens uh, goofing around. So if you actually decide uh, that you want to purchase uh, any of these things that I mentioned, you could click the link below this video for any of these items, and it'll, I'll get a small percentage if you happen to make a purchase, purchase um, from, from my link. So that's a way of uh, supporting me and our channel. So if you decide to do that, I really appreciate that. All right, thanks a lot. Let's move on to the next thing. So another thing that I like to always carry with me is this open yell knife. Um, this is made in France. It is something that I always carry in my pocket. It's a folding knife, so it's very portable. And this is the number 10 uh, size blade. Um, so you just open it up. I've really beaten up this knife uh, quite a bit. I use this for cutting all of my uh, lettuce for my salad mixes, and it gets a nice clean cut. It's very easy to sharpen. I sharpen it very often. Um, I actually cut myself with this because it was very very sharp when I first got it and um, at one point I must have hit a rock or something in the garden and I actually chopped the tip off uh, you might not be able to see but uh, I actually prefer that and I filed it down so that there's not a sharp tip on the end of it uh, which I don't really need for cutting lettuce so it's just less likely that I'm going to cut my finger again uh, because I don't have that sharp blunt uh, you know sharp edge pointed edge there but I use this for very precision uh, cuts of certain things like my lettuce um, that I cut a lot uh, for market um, but I also like this um, it's also something that if I'm not carrying my hori hori knife around I know this is about five and a half um, inches actually let me double check that with my my measurement on my yeah this is this also is exactly six inches according to my Hori Hori knife. So this is very helpful as well for measuring out spacings in the garden, um, especially if you're someone like me that does a lot of square foot style gardening and you plant things very closely together in order to get the most um, crops grown in square foot per square foot. So 
This um, is another thing I really like to carry around with me. I use it as a measuring thing as well, um, and it's a really nice knife. Uh, it's really cool. Um, so I like that, and uh, I use that all the time. The next tool I highly recommend um, that you have in the garden is a set of pruners. Um, I've really beat these up. I probably should get a second pair because I'm always losing these, and I put them down, and I can't remember where I left it, and I messed up this, uh, this back part of it is a little messed up, but it still works. These are, this brand is called Fiskars. I think I got this at Tractor Supply, but there are better brands than this, um, but it works. Um, I use this for pruning my branches off my apple trees. I use it for uh, clipping off branches of my tomatoes. I use this for cutting uh, the stems of some um, like things like my uh, like my lettuce heads or some things that are a little bit thicker that you need to get in there and really cut them um, at the soil level. I use these a lot. A um, lot of different things y you'll want to use the pruners for. So uh, recommend just keeping them sharp, having a sharpener to keep it sharp, and these will uh, these will go far. So a pair of pruners, definitely recommend a pair of pruners in the garden. So the next thing. Uh, on my list of very important uh, items for, for having it for the garden are rakes. And I have three rakes here that I use very often. Uh, this one was one that I think might have got from family. I don't remember buying this, but it's one that we just had. It's gotten beat up because I leave it outside too much and anything that has wood handles that you leave out too much is eventually going to break. So I need to take better care of these tools. But this metal rake here is really good for raking out uh, crop debris after something has um, passed this time in the garden, this is really good for raking out all the old uh, crop debris. I use this a lot. Um, this is a landscape rake. This one is 30 inches wide, and I had to search uh, a little bit harder to find a 30 inch wide uh, landscape rake. I got that because all of my beds in my market garden are 30 inches wide, so this helps me um, prepare my, my rows before planting and make sure that the row is still 30 inches wide. Sometimes they try to, the soil tries to move around and this helps keep the rows nice and straight and, and uh, nice and flat before planting. So I use this a lot. found this on Amazon. Um, whenever I go to Tractor Supply or other stores, I find a lot of 36 inch rakes. That would probably work too if you did it at kind of an angle for a 30 inch wide bed. But um, if you're just a backyard gardener, you, um, you uh, you might have like a four by eight, you know, raised bed, and if your beds are like four feet wide, then a 36 inch wide uh, landscape rake might work just as well. Or you could probably do without this, but I really like using this in my market garden, and I really am glad that I got it. Um, another one that I just started to use a lot more um, last year was just this simple um, leaf rake, and um, I said I used the metal rake a lot for scraping out um, old crop debris, and I use that this for that too. But what I actually found that I like the most about this, um, I got this tip from uh, another YouTube channel, Honey Tree Farm, uh, mentioned this. He uses the rake uh, backwards, not normal like this, but backwards. And before he plants, he'll come with this leaf rake and smooth out the soil so it's very, very smooth and you have a very even uh, surface before, before, before seeding something, um, like carrots, where you need to be really precise with your seeding um, to get good germination. And after I saw that tip, I started trying this, and it really, really works, and I really, really like how, how it works uh, smoothing out the soil. These are really cheap, too, and um, this is something that we just had lying around, and now I use it all the time in the garden. So highly recommend trying that before you plant something. Uh, tilt it backwards like this and smooth out your soil really really nice and I bet you'll have really good germination on whatever you're planting. Next tool I uh, recommend for the backyard gardener is the scuffle hoe, uh, weeder hoe. It, I think that's what this is called. It's got a sharp uh, piece of metal here on the end and what you do with this is come in for weeding and you can just kind of go right underneath the weeds and just 
scrape it all out. This is very effective. Um, I use this a lot in between my rows, like in my walkways, uh, which now are like eight to 10 inches. So I could do one or two passes in my walkways and get any weeds out of my walkways. Um, sometimes this doesn't work very well for how closely I uh, plant things in my gardens. I do very close spacings. So I ha experimented with, um, forget what this is called. I put um, like a metal hanger type thing on the end of it so that it's only like two inches and I could come in between um, like heads of lettuce or something like that to weed very, very precisely and closer than I could with this, which I think is like five inches or something like that. So that's another thing you could do if you have one of these, try to uh, rig something on the end of it, um, uh, like a little hook or something, so you could get in really close in between plants uh, without disturbing the plants and just get rid of those weeds. So this is very effective. Um, this is something you want to be preventative in the garden. You don't want to come in once the weeds are already established and like a uh, foot and a half high. Uh, that's going to be too late. You're going to want to just come in and chop those out. But when the weeds are small, that's when you want to come in with, with the weeder scuffle hoe and get rid of them. Next tool you're going to need is your standard rake. Um, this is my favorite one. I have two of these. Um, this is the only one that's, that's fiberglass. Um, the handle is and I really like this one I another one I have is has a wood handle um, I just really I, I really like this um, this shovel I think I stole this from my dad I borrowed it and I never gave it back but uh, yeah it's just your average uh, shovel it's eight inches wide so I use this now in between my rows in my market garden I make all my rows just eight inches uh, wide which is the width of this shovel and I keep my lines nice and straight in my walkways. And you, I do a lot of um, digging. Um, things like you're planting trees, you're digging, you're preparing rows, or you're preparing an area um, for new beds. You're, you're gonna use something, you're gonna need a nice shovel. It doesn't have to be new, this is an old shovel, but um, I really like the fiberglass. It feels more sturdy. I actually like it, it has a good weight to it. and. Uh, it just works really well. Highly recommend a good shovel. You can probably find good ones used. Uh, try to find a good deal so you don't spend a ton of money on stuff like this. But you do want to spend enough money that you won't have to buy them uh, when they break. You don't want to buy one that's going to break. Buy, buy some good tools and invest for the long term if you're in gardening for the long term. So, All right, the next tool I want to talk about, essential for the backyard garden, is high quality seed trays. Um, you're going to be planting anything you're going to get the best results when you start them from seed. The first trays I ever got were from a bootstrap farmer and uh, this is a 50 cell tray. This works well. I still use this uh, for certain things. But you see, there's just a tiny hole in the bottom for drainage and there's no slits or holes around these cells. So the only drainage they get is in the bottom and, and that's it. Um, this tray is made of plastic. It's a high quality plastic, but these do tend to break over time if you don't take good care of them. Um, I still have a lot of these. I, Bootstrap Farmer makes really good trays and they have a wide selection of different kinds of trays and sizes and things like that. Um, so these were the first ones that I got. I got some 50 cell trays and I got some 200 cell trays and I still use those uh, to this day. But what I switched to uh, was the uh, wind strip trays. I switched to the wind strip trays starting last year because I noticed that I got sometimes when you leave uh, plants in the cell trays for too long the roots get very um, tangled and swirl around in there because they want to grow down but they can't because they're just trapped and this is all the soil that they have um, to survive and then when you end up planting that eventually in the ground there's something called plant transplant shock where it takes um, a week or two for that plant to recover from those swirled you know roots from being trapped stuck in that tray for too long and it does it will grow uh, but it just takes longer for the plant to take off once you plant it once I learned about these wind strip trays it made me want to invest in these now these um, I don't know if you saw that bends a little bit because it's a thinner plastic this is injection molded stuff i can't bend this this is solid this will probably last i think this comes with like a 30-year warranty or something um and uh 
yeah, these cost a lot more. Um, I forget how much I spent. I think it was over $200 for like 20 of these trays, but they're all I'm going to use from now on. They're really solid. These have a slit in the sides. Uh, not They have a big hole in the bottom for, for that air pruning effect, not just the tiny hole that the bootstrap... Uh, bootstrap farmer trays had but also on the sides there are two slits so that will prevent your transplant from growing those swirly roots and getting um, root bound in these trays it'll be a lot healthier and they'll air prune once the roots start to go around like that and they hit the air that root will stop growing and it'll grow more roots that'll be growing down and um, you're going to create a lot healthier um, transplants for planting in your garden. So this one is a 128 cell um, windstrip tray. This is a perfect size for me. I do a lot of salad uh, lettuce heads and this is perfect for that. Um, so I'll put links to this uh, also down in the show notes below this video if you guys want to invest in some high quality trays yourself this year for your gardens. Now the last tool I want to mention that I think are essential for uh, the backyard gardener is this cedar. This is called the Earthway Cedar. I believe this is the most uh, economical cedar uh, that you could find on the market. Um, there's more expensive ones. Uh, there's one called the Zhang and that is around $400. And that is a little bit more precise of a cedar uh, from what I understand. Um, but at this point I just can't uh, probably could afford to get that upgrade that maybe I will in the future but for now the Earthway works really well it costs like hundred and twenty dollars it comes with a bunch of different seed plates um, depending on what it is that uh, you're trying to plant um, here this one is a radish and spinach plate so they're really easy to put in and take out. I think it came with like five different plates. I use this for direct seeding uh, salad mix. I use it for direct seeding radishes. Uh, I'm going to be using it for turnips this year. What else do I use it for? I use it for uh, beets. Um, shoot, I use it for almost everything except for uh, the lettuce heads that I transplant into the ground. Um, I also use it for carrots, which are very, very small seeds, and um, and this works really well as long as your soil is prepared really well. Um, however, if you just have um, a couple small raised beds, like a three foot by six foot raised bed or a four foot by eight foot raised bed, this probably is not going to make much sense for small raised beds like that. But if you see behind me, I have some. 20 foot, I think these are about 20 feet long, these rows here. These are just in-ground permanent raised beds. And on a situation like that, raised beds like this, the, this kind of cedar comes in really, really handy. And um, I would highly recommend it. It'll save your back quite a bit. And you'll get really consistent uh, germination as long as the soil conditions are, are really good. So. I'll put links to this down below as well. I've talked about this in other videos, but I love this cedar. I use it for my market garden, and um, it just works really well for how much it costs, how little it costs compared to other um, cedars on the market. So if you're in a situation where you have some longer raised beds, like it, you would need at least like a 16-foot bed to consider using something like this. This would be an excellent choice for just making your garden more efficient and uh, easing the uh, easing easing up on your body I guess I would say because I've done the bending over uh, and direct seating by by hand it takes a long time and it's a lot of bending over this uh, eliminates all of that so I like it for that reason alone plus it gets a nice even um, uh, seating and and you get pretty good germination for the most part so check this out all right that's gonna wrap up this video on 10 essential tools that you need for your backyard garden. I hope you enjoyed it, found some value in it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. I'd really appreciate it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one.